folks, how you doing? Let's get to work. Hey, fellow snitches, how you doing? This is Pat Butler, your tall grass home inspectors here in the Flint Hills of Kansas. Hopefully you're all having a great day and a great weekend. So last night I got on Facebook. I got on to the Inspector Brotherhood site. As you can see, I'm rocking my ID cap, you know, and showing solidarity. And there's just been a lot of contention lately as far as pre-listing inspections. I first of all want to say thank you for all those who do ask questions and hit me up either either email or basically instant messenger uh, and give me support. I say thank you all. You know who you are. I'm not going to you know, put people's names out there. Um, I do like to give shout outs for people who do you know, a lot of credit and do a lot of good. And sometimes their names go unsung. So that's why I do that. But for those who reach out to me offline, um, thank you very much because your words really do mean a lot to me. It really means the world to me that you think that the information that I have is something worth of value and it's something that you really want to listen to. On the other hand, I have a lot of people who are trying to shut myself and other people down about sharing what it is that we know. If it's not even about pre-listing inspections, it could just be on technical. We're not all at the same level at the same time. We're all constantly growing and expanding. You know, I at least like to think that we're all growing and expanding, but it seems like it's gotten more contentious. So. I just want to take a time and just say, if you're not really interested in the things that I'm saying, cool, no harm, no foul. Please don't lose any sleep over anything that I say. I promise I will not do the same and we can just move on. You know, this is a very big world, you know, and we don't have to occupy the same space, nor the same air, nor the same conversation. So y'all can go over there and I'll go over here and we'll just move forward. OK, but that's enough of that we'll get into uh, etiquette and everything else in the lessons. But what I really wanted to do was really address the things that I talked about yesterday, last night on Facebook, all right? I really want to show people that pre-listing home inspections is something that you really want to look at as far as a complete system. You know, we really went through and we broke down a lot of things and see how they're all interconnected that to have a successful, uh, program along with a successful business that you need to address all those different factions of a program, regardless if it's pre-listing inspection or not. But what I really wanted to do was create this so that we can really drum down for everybody pre-listing inspections, what it is, what it's not, how to get it started where you're at, okay? There's a lot of programs, there's a lot of people with a lot of great information, and I know it can be overwhelming. On the other hand, it seems like, you know, that it's always silos and that you only hear from one or two people. So what I want to do was just get it out there and let's just start from the beginning, from scratch, and get this thing started, all right? So. If you're with me, let's get started and we're going to do the training. Oh, I almost forgot. Couple things as far as uh, these videos. I am told you I'm going to start uploading a lot more content, all right? I told you before, I love teaching. That is something that I truly enjoy to do. I love teaching, I love training, I love training new home inspectors and people that just come and ask for things. That's why um, I try to make myself as available as possible. So look for more content on my channel, on Facebook groups, but um, ultimately we're going to move to a, another platform. I'll tell you more about that as we move along, but just be on the lookout because I'm not just passionate about pre-listing home inspections. I am passionate about this industry as a whole. So I am officially throwing my name into the hat 
and I'm going to be a provider of content, especially with our industry by and large, okay? So be on the lookout. Uh, I got a lot more stuff coming. So with that being said, let's get started. So let's get started about these pre-listing inspections. Let's see if we can, um, yeah, we'll go right there. All righty. So what I want to do is create, help you create a pre-listing inspection system. All right. Not just a program, not just using a platform, but developing a line item in your home inspection business. That's what this class is for. It's going to be the first of a series. Hopefully by the end of the series, you will have everything you need to have a pre-listing home inspection service that you can provide for your clients and in your market space. If not, you'll at least know fact from fiction and be able to make a smart business decision of if this is something that will work for you. Okay, that is the intent of this class, and we'll see how long it takes because I think we got a couple slides here, but we're going to move through. Okay, let's get started. So, the things that we're going to cover uh, we're going to cover a few things, but it's all going to be basic stuff. Actually, it's a lot going to be with um, business as a whole and not necessarily about inspecting, okay? Because this is an inspection service, so this is going to fall more on the less on the business side than it does necessarily of the technical side, all right? So, and a lot of things is going to be straight business 101, i.e. slash for inspection business consulting business models. So we're going to do that. We're going to uh, identify the target market for pre-listing inspections. And also, one thing is that a lot of people ask is, uh, does my business, uh, says, does my market need a pre-listing inspection program? I understand what you're saying, but once again, like I talked about before, I think that that's a wrong question because if you ask that type of question, you're always going to get the wrong answer. And what I mean is, if you're asking if somebody needs something that they never had before, of course they don't need it. But I think a better question is, would your clients benefit or would your market area benefit from having a pre-listing inspection system or program or business model that you can offer so that they can make more uh, better decisions as far as selling their homes as just as well as other people buying their homes. So some of the things we're going to cover also is going to be um, how to start and conduct a SWOT analysis. All right. For those who have never done this before, uh, a SWOT analysis just means it's an acronym for your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, and we're going to have a worksheet. With that being said, the worksheets are in here, but I will also post the worksheets so that you can just download them if you don't never had one before and you can work them. You can just scratch them on a piece of paper if you want to, but I just want to make sure that this stuff is available. Okay. Also, with the threats, how to manage those potential threats. That was a lot of the reasons why people saying that pre-listing inspections don't work is because they look at the potential threats, and that's a reason not to do it as a whole. I always believe that everything is possible. Um, I Once again, I apologize. I'm retired Army, so there's no such thing as the word can't in our vocabulary. You may, it may be unwise. It might even be illegal. It might even be immoral, but there's no can't. So it can be done. You just have to know how to manage it and decide on was it going to be a good decision or a bad decision. So what else are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about USPs, also better known as branding. We're going to talk about how to brand pre-listing inspections. And then also dollars and cents, figuring out what you need to figure out how to make a proper and accurate price point to sell your pre-listing inspection package and also how to upsell okay just like you do on a inspection service when you're working for a potential buyer 
there's potential for you to upsell a pre-listing inspection so that you can also maximize your return and increase your sales revenue from just basic upsells and how to figure that in to your program okay and we're going to add that all up and give you a base model of what your pre-list and inspection program should work now with that being said i am not doing this work for you all right i am here to teach you how to fish i am not fishing for you i will show you the worms i will even show you the rod Am I going to cast it and throw it out there for you? No, today is oh, okay? We're going to work this out together. With that also being said, I'm here for you if you have any questions or how to do it. And I can help you with uh, developing or even attaining some services or even some benefits or some tools to keep, keep you moving. But those are going to be the topics for today. Like I said, this is going to be the first of many series, uh, uh, first in a series. And we're going to get it started. All right. Why would anybody buy pre-listing inspections? Okay. Um, one thing that we're going to have to do is going to have to figure out who is our target market. Who in our area would be interested in using a pre-listing inspection program? This is something that you need to ask yourself before you turn around and invest time, money, energy, an effort to create something that in your mind now don't even know if it works or not. So first, if you want to do something like this, like with any business decision, who is it this going to be for? This is the question that you need to ask up front before dollar one is even spent. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the factors that we would need to find out who and how. All right. Key factors that you you might want to start looking at is in your area, the current housing stock. That means how many houses right now are on sale. OK, yes, this is a real estate question, but guess what? <laughs> We're in the real estate industry. OK, we may not be the ones buying and selling, but you do need to know what is happening in your market for you to take maximum advantage of your situation. So your current housing stock, how many houses are on sale right now and how long are they staying on sale, okay? Are there being, are they three, four months hanging on? Are they, you know, as soon as they turn around and put listings, they get offers on them within hours from posting? Uh, those are things that you really need to know so that you can make that decision. Also, is it a buyer's or is it a seller's market? I know it's a little bit of an overlap, but we got to look at these things individually so that we can come out with an accurate formula of how to move forward. So we got to look at the buyers and sellers markets and what's happening. Also, you need to look at the current trends. Are there houses being built in your area? Is there a housing shortage? Um, is there movers or shakers in your industry as far as um, the, the total effect on your market space as far as new homes being built or existing homes that's on the market. So all these things and a lot more goes into deciding of what's the current climate on the ground as far as housing stock. Because remember, you're going to be working because the clients are going to be putting their uh, houses into that market, okay? They're not in that market trying to pull it out. So you're going to have to kind of forecast of what's going on. With that being said, let's look at some of the resources where you can pull some of this information. A great place is, like it says, is looking at a marketing forecast. These are ideal, especially if you're looking into your business model as a whole. But even in pre-listing home inspections, what is the housing conditions in your market space? And I'll give you an example. Um, a lot of people may have heard before that when I did mines or when I decided to do mines, I was in the middle of a market saturation. We have a new, we have a lot of business that were coming into the area and was, you know, major businesses and major government entities, which meant that there's going to be a lot more work and that meant the population was going to increase. So they didn't have enough housing on there to support the potential uh, population growth. 
So houses started going, uh, going up like crazy, and the market was red hot. All of a sudden, somebody turned around and said, hey, well, if there's not enough housing here, why don't we put up some apartment complexes and see if we can support the, uh, the housing requirement in the area? Well, that was all well, fine and dandy, but they put three of them major um, multi-apartment units up simultaneously. Okay, so we went from a housing shortage to a housing uh, influx and saturation. So now all of a sudden, within months, within a year, houses that were just flying off the shelves and people were just buying them, all of a sudden were sitting around for two, three, four, five months on listings, which you know, which made picking the houses. Um, more uh more in the favor of potential buyers because now they can pick and choose and people were carrying these mortgages so that meant that the uh the the prices of the homes was dropping just so that they can move the inventory people were trying to move out of their houses but they were still making those house payments so they decided to you know slash their prices and you know just to be more competitive so that's what happened and uh, once again, when I did mines, I did a house, fantastic house, very little flaws. I mean, new furnish, new water heater, plumbing, was all PEX tubing. I mean, gas was fine. It was phenomenal. It was well-maintained home. Um, only a couple little damaged shingles, which was par for the course, especially when you're in Kansas and you have these high crosswinds and you're in Tornado Alley. You're going to find one or two houses that just have broken shingles. It's just you know, nature. Uh, but the house was fine. But the the deal fell through. Don't know what happened. Didn't get into people's business. But the thing that really let me know how saturated the market was is that house sat for another 60 to 70 days on the market. Every time I turned around and looked and I drove by, that house was for sale. And it was beautiful. I mean, well-priced, perfect little nook, you know, and on the right side of the uh, of the school district, and you know, it was it was ideal for anybody who was living in our area. If you were military, if you were if you worked at the university, it was just fantastic. But you know, the house sat there, so that's one of the reasons why I decided to start doing pre listings to help folks become more competitive in their market. That's my story you got to figure out yours okay so let's 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 move on because i know i didn't beat that thing to a head uh several times already all righty who would benefit from pre-listing inspections all right this is another thing that you need to figure out of who is going to be your target market you want to have a target niche because if you just try to go out there and say, everybody's selling a home, I'm going to reach for them, your advertising dollars and your marketing dollars are going to go through the roof because you need to find out who is the more ideal people that are going to be selling their homes uh, so that you can talk to them at their level. So if you have a lot of people that are church, um, that's you know saying if you're in a heavy religious community, marketing at the church would be a great idea. If you have folks that are, you know, um, that are military, finding um, advertisements in on post or around post or in uh, places where the military and their families like to uh, uh, hang out and shop and, and, and conduct their daily lives is where you want to focus your marketing or advertising dollars and let them know, hey, if you're doing this, give me a call. And then also those people that's going to see these pre-listed homes, it's going to give them an added benefit because now they know that that home has already been checked out at least once. So you really need to figure out who is going to be the people that's going to be maximizing of the pre-listing inspection program that you're proposing and also who's going to be that target market. So, you know, you got to have those uh, factors in there. So, um, some some of the things that you would like to know is like 
current education level? Are they college educated, all right? Or is there more high school or is it more industrial, all right? Uh, you wanna know the reading and comprehension levels, all right? Like I said before, that's the reason why I write the reports that I do because I have a various income and education level, all right? I have, you know, a lot of people who are on the high end and they make six figures and they buy houses that are applicable. And then again, I have younger uh, first time home buyers that's just, you know, either in their mid to late 20s and they're buying the house for the first time. And, you know, they're not uh, high school, uh, they're high school graduates or they're into the workforce or they're in the military. So, you know, I had to write my reports just to uh, reflect my target audiences and it has to match that. So that's why I write the reports that I do, but also that's how I market my pre-listed inspections for these folks. Education level, like I says, I have a, uh, we have a, uh, one of the big 12 uh, universities right here where I live. So I have to address that market as well, as well as the ones that are close to uh, the military facilities in my local area. All right. Also the income levels, who's actually buying and selling houses. All right. You want to make sure that whatever your price point is, it's reflective of the market. One of the things that I see all the time is inspectors bashing other inspectors because of how much the price is. Now, if you're in a local area and you think that somebody's um, really uh, way out of the margins, you want to address it, by all means. I'm, I don't have a dog in that hunt. But where I do see a potential problem or miscommunication is that somebody in Florida is talking about somebody in Wisconsin about how much they charge. Run your race, you know, just you have to say in caveats that, hey, this is something that works in my area. So that way people are not trying to uh, reflect the cost that's something that's not conducive to your own marketing area. All right. Also, one thing you want to look at is the moderate age. All right. If you have a lot of folks that's uh, that's retiring, they're going to be selling their homes, you know, saying downsizing, empty nesters. So you want to make sure that you be able to identify those folks as well. And these are not all one shot, one kill deals. It's in a, it is a, a culmination of all the things in the populace of your area. So you want to find the, the, the biggest percentage that the, the biggest representative figure of your market space. And that's where you want to start to target. And also you want to have your pre-listed inspection program cater to those folks in that largest demographic so that you have the most bang for your buck when you're marketing and also selling and facilitating your services. It's going to reflect your community. So these are the things that you need to know that is who is in your community who are selling homes or potential buying homes that your program is going to affect, all right? So, so let's, oops, sorry, there. So let's get to working on uh, your SWOT analysis. So like I said before, SWOT is a business tool that you use not only when you're creating your business, but also when you're introducing a new service or line item into your market space, okay? You need to know what are your strengths, your weaknesses, as uh, says your opportunities and your threats. These are the things that you're going to have to assess and analyze so that you can move forward and know how to move forward in presenting your product, okay? So let's take a look in detail about your SWOT analysis, all right? So what would be some of your strengths, okay? Um, if you're a multi-inspector firm or you have a strong uh, connection with local realtors or you have connections with some of the major industries, 
uh, your name is synonymous in the area, or if you're in small town fan, uh, towns that you know your your name is good, you got a great family name, whatever it is that gives you um, a, a place that you can use that to your advantage is always going to be your strength. Okay, and then there's vice versa. There's your weaknesses. Okay, where are you weak at? All right. Are you weak at advertising and marketing? Are you weak at uh, logistics? You know what I'm saying? It really, you know, takes you a long time to go places and do things. Um, your reporting is, uh, is, is uh, less than stellar. Are you working with a uh, software that's really giving you problems? Or, you know, somebody else is in there who is doing it better than you are right now. You know, whatever it is, I'm not saying any of them could be overcome they all can be overcame you can thrive in your market space you just got to figure out how to thrive and what's going on so that you can steer your boat to wherever it needs to go so with that you're going to look at your opportunities where it is that you're going to be able to maximize your full potential of introducing your pre-listing inspection program okay what are those things where like if you know that uh, this business is opening or that these houses are going to be bought out and redeveloped or if there's a land grant going on where they're starting to build new houses and it's going to be more competitive for uh, folks to sell their homes. These are the things that you really need to know so that you can take advantage of them moving forward. And then there's the threats. And I really want to take a minute just to really hone in about the potential threats. All right we really need to really take advantage of what we know about each other because that is where you really going to make up the greatest loss or take have the maximum greatest advantage when you are um when you're introducing a pre-listing inspection program all right they like we said before there are some haters out there all right. There's some people just hate you because it is Tuesday. It's raining and your name is Johnny, you know, let alone of the fact is that you are competitive in their market space or that you're identified as a deal killer or that you're a woman or you're of a minority there. I mean, there's always going to be reasons why somebody's not going to hire you and they may have their favorites. All right. So all these are weaknesses and potential threats and also the the market area could be a potential threat if they're having a police action where um houses are being bought out and you know saying it's more of a gun or are being condemned or all of a sudden the floodplain changes these are all potential threats and we need to understand what those threats are but i really want to talk about two organic threats in our industry by and large and how they will affect installing a pre-listing inspection program so we can talk about those specifically all right all right who's down with opf all right um i i i wrote this and i had a little humor because it is really things that um i found comical but it's very much true what i mean by opf is other people's fears all right there's just things about something that is unknown that's really going to affect uh how we interact in our industry all right and a lot of times we're dealing with these two in particular we're dealing with agents fears and other inspectors fears our competition and the one thing that i really talked about yesterday and i really want to kind of take a minute to really uh, slow it down and give you a chance to digest what it is that I'm trying to say is that you need to address these fears, all right, or be able to manage it. I'm not saying you're going to take them away, but you got to at least realize that they're out there, that these fears are real to them. And if you do that, then you can develop a strategy to help them manage their fears so that you can make the maximum gains all right let's take a look first at the agents fears okay what most agents are worried about are two things specifically all right and the first thing that you hear all the time is disclosures they're always worried about that if you do a pre-listed inspection 
you are they're going to have to disclose anything that's in the house which is going to make that less attractive okay it is a half truth but it's not the whole truth all right most people want to know what they're buying or what they want to sell but because most agents are brand new and this is one of those things that's just been carried on for you know three or four generations and i'm not talking about age generations i'm just talking about generations in the real estate community because like i said before most agents are really only in real estate for about five years and then they move on to something else they'll bounce from a lot of them will bounce from agency to agency and then they realize you know what this is just not for them and it just has a very high attrition rate so a lot of the stigmatisms that are carried in the real estate community is primarily word of mouth and through training and um and nurturing so inspectors always kill your deals and and it's and it's something that we really got to address is because you need to understand that even though we're usually on the opposite sides of the coins when that deal goes when that deal falls through because something that we and i'll just say like legitimately let alone if we call something out that wasn't true but even if it's legitimate that real estate agent that put all that time and effort in to making sure that this deal got they're not getting paid all right and it may sound comical at first but they have families they have children they have stresses they pay taxes they got car notes and you're talking about three four six weeks that they may be working with somebody and finally they got you know saying they got parties the interested parties together and they're facilitating a home sale and they don't get paid until that deal gets closed and all of a sudden after everything's been negotiated and everybody agreed to the party and then all of a sudden you find poly in the plumbing and all of a sudden it can't be fixed all that time and energy is for nothing they get zero dollars for it no pat on the back oh well we'll get them next time they just don't get paid they get paid only when deals close all right it's a jacked up system so that's why they're heavily leaning um leaning on inspectors to make sure that these deals pass not because that they're evil people it's just because hey they got needs that need to be met and they're trying to meet needs just like you're trying to meet needs but if they don't turn around and sell that house they are not their family is going without so that is a legitimate fear that they have and anything that is that's going to inhibit or even slow that down is a, a nightmare potentially for a real estate agent, okay? And also, if they disclose a house and they may have it listed and they have another comparable house that don't have those problems or at least they don't identify those problems, their house is going to be looked over. And there's very seldom times that somebody will come back and revisit a house um after they looked and they try to make an offer on something else you know they may come back and relook but nine times out of ten they'll look for something completely different or end up with something completely different so that they feel like that opportunity is not even worth the risk all right but this is a a i say a generational fear this is a taught fear it, it is legitimate because they're fearing it they are feeling it but the actual facts so, uh, most of the times prove otherwise and that's what i've been learning over the course of my tenure as a home inspector is that folks want to know this information and they're willing to work with it if they know how to manage it all right if they know that it's going to cost a little bit much to uh, uh a little bit to get the house that they want that's in the right school district low crime rate um, overall maintenance is okay. They just got one or two issues that need, they can manage that, you know, but it's always been that potential fear that that house would sit on there and they would never get paid from that house sale. So let's just assume the fact is, is that that agent is really working for the best interest of their client and that they really want to make sure that that house gets sold, not just for, um, altruistic reasons, 
but legitimately they want to help their clients. And I think that that's a better way to approach how to work with them, not just in pre-listing inspections, but with them by and large. And then we got our favorite, the our competition, our local inspectors. I don't know how many times, and I know I spoke about it, that we talk about how inspectors are throwing each other underneath the bus simply because they did a pre-listing inspection. They, there are folks out there who honestly believe that if they make their competition look as horrible as possible, that's going to give them an advantage. And not only that, but they will dig through the trenches to find out anything that the other inspector missed to make themselves look good. They are out there. I think personally is a very sad, sad way to look at a business and how to work in your market space because I know that's very depressing. I know that's very stressful. And you're just bringing everybody down as a whole, okay? So we just look at why they look, they fear that way because they think that they're going to make, uh, they're going to be in better footing because they're, they're trying to differentiate themselves from the other inspector. And here's a one-on-one -on -one opportunity where I can really show my stuff and show you how thorough I am by going through and finding all these things that everybody else did. All right, it's a natural business model. I get it. But to the degree and amp that a lot of inspectors are taking this to and a lot of the prejudices that they're doing, you are hurting yourselves in the process. And I don't think that you truly appreciate that. But um, we have to acknowledge the fact is that they want to eat and they want to make sure that they are a, uh, a more referable, a more competent uh appearing inspection company than necessarily you. So you have to realize that as a potential threat. All right. So what can we do for that? All right. Let's start back with the agents. All right. With the agencies, you're going to have to get in there into the offices and debunk a lot of these myths. All right. You're going to have to go in there and really, truly explain the pre-listing concepts. All right. And that seller's disclosure is a good thing. I, it's going to help them accurately forecast the price of that house I, and not deal with what the inspector found down the road because those are the things that's been the deal killers is the unknowns and the time limit that it takes to correct those things. And from the time from inspection to closing and, um, and trying to address any of these issues has been the most contentious part of the home sale. If we can alleviate that, I know for a fact that agents would be more apt to using this program. And but we got to debunk that old myth that you know that not knowing anything is the best way. It's not, but that's what they believe. So we're gonna have to go in there and line by line, item by item, and prove to them that disclosures is something that you know you can use for your advantage all right and also we're going to have to show them that it helps other clients i mean it helps their clients they're going to look better when these things are addressed and also using a pre-listed inspection system all right um also we need to let agents know that they're going to have higher home sales okay that means that if these things get addressed that if they just weigh them off, they're going to get maximum benefit from that because now they're not being talked down from these major deficiencies that have found out the inspection, all right? And also, if you can get these things fixed while the house is prior to the house actually going on market, now they can command the top dollar for that house in that um, in their um in their market area compared to the um, to the comps, they're really going to have higher return on investments because that means higher home sale, which means higher commissions. So there is a win-win in there for them, but we got to show them how to minimize the risk and receive the maximum gains, all right? And also this is gonna make them more competitive. 
using a pre-listed inspection company or a company that offers a pre-listed inspection is going to make them more co um, competitive in their office. You got a couple houses that you drive them by, three of them for sale, all of them have two bedrooms, uh, three bedrooms, two baths, two car garage um, in the premier school district, and they're all selling around uh, uh, $200,000. But one of them has pre-listed and that has pre-listed inspections that they can turn around and see and verify that uh, that there's no major deficiencies that were found during the inspection is going to make that house more competitive on the ground. OK, that is just a fact that we need to introduce to them because this is a system that has never really been used before. So you're talking to people that even though they may have been in the industry for a while, they don't know, all right? And you have to go in there and we're going to have to teach them. But the, one of the greatest things that uh, we can use in our office presentations is the fact is that most movement um, uh, pre-listing inspection programs have a lead generation tool for agents. That is really, a, that is a game changer in itself. If you can turn around and have a lead generating source going back to that agent, that means that if you have five people that looked at the house and five people that uh, looked at the inspection report, one of them is going to buy that house, but the other ones may not have a, a uh, real estate agent, all right, that's working for them. Because a lot of times folks go through open houses, they may not, they may not only get a buyer's agent until once they're really ready to make an offer, all right? That is the nature of the real estate industry now. A lot of people are using buyers and agents now, but there's still a lot that don't. So that gives that listing agent the opportunity that that house may have been sold, but they can actually help uh, those clients find more homes. They can introduce more homes in their market space, or they can actually uh, sign an agency where they become a, uh, a buyer's agent and work for the other side. So lead generation is something that's very important for real estate agents, okay? And if you give them these potential reasons of why using a pre-listing inspection system such as yours can be a benefit to them, you're going to be a in a situation where they're going to be a lot more receptive to what it is that you have to say and what it is that you're marketing. Okay. So these are some of the things that we're really going to have to do to help bring the agents around to get them to support your pre-listed inspection system. All right. So we've talked about this before. And if you are in that office and you're given a presentation, I want you to play this video for them so that they can truly understand what's going on. And you can just, if you have hard time speaking in front of folks, I understand it. Thank Preston Sandlin for this one because he posted this. I have no uh, reservations of stealing it because I'm giving it back to y'all which he was doing as well. So Preston, I want to say thank you for this video, but this is a monster if you're talking about uh, showing agents why they need to work with a, a, a pre-list and inspection program. Y'all watch this. Selling your home to an online company, it's a practice growing in popularity across the Charlotte region. It was very simple. I didn't have to worry about how long it's on the market. By now, you've probably heard the names Open Door, OfferPad, Knock. These companies are new to Charlotte, offering to help you sell your home or buy it outright. But we wanted to know if there's a catch to this. Eyewitness News anchor John Paul looked into the companies and asked how this new trend is changing our housing market. After 14 years of owning this rental home in Huntersville, Bonnie Shimshack decided it was time to sell. She got on. Offers from companies like We Buy Ugly Houses and Cash for Homes. They were really low -ball to, you know, They wanted like 129 for our house. So she decided to check with a company that's new to our area, OfferPad. It's the new way homes are sold. She'd seen these ads on TV and tried it out. Their offer, 192.
$2,000, almost $70,000 higher, and with no open houses and a fast closing. It was very, very unexpected. Unexpected? Yes. Why? Be because of the closing date that we chose. From the time you guys contacted them to the time you had a check in your hands? Yes. 15 days. 15 days. After the sale, once Shimshek's family was out, the home saw a flurry of activity. Contractors painted. Plus, they put in new floors, countertops, appliances. Now it's back on the market again for 2099. They had done the upgrades that we were going that we thought we were going to have to do before we sold the house. We dug through records and found that so far in Mecklenburg County, offer pads purchased more than 60 homes. Signs are popping up everywhere. This house on Woodknoll Drive, purchased for 170,000, sold two months later for 208. This home on Four Acre Court, purchased by OfferPad for 298,000, now on the market for 332.9. A couple doors down, the company scooped up this home for 284,000. After some upgrades, there's a pending sale for 319.9. A Channel 9 review of records shows, on average, OfferPad charges. 14% more than what they paid for a home. With these companies essentially flipping homes in Charlotte, we wanted to know what is this going to do to the local market, especially when you consider Charlotte's in an affordable housing crisis. Is this something you guys have been watching at all? Well, we certainly noticed it. Dr. Richard Buttermer is the director of the Childress Klein Center for Real Estate at UNC Charlotte and says he's been curious about these new companies. If you think of the traditional model of flipping you see on HGTV and some of these other places, I suspect what these folks are doing is they're bringing a little more uh, larger scale to that. We checked out about a dozen homes bought and sold by OfferPack. Nearly all appeared to have had renovations done. Will the prices across Charlotte be going up? I, I don't think at the current levels of activity they're doing, which is around 100 homes, they're not really going to affect the overall market that much. But Buttermer says as these companies gain a foothold and more houses are flipped for a profit, that could change. However, we found not every house is turning a profit. This one, for example, purchased by Open Door in South Charlotte for $401,000. On the market today, for 387,000. The companies do take a commission though, like a realtor, but they call it a fee. In Shimshek's case, Open Door charged $11,000, but with no open houses or repairs to deal with, she believes it was well worth it. John Paul, Channel 9 Eyewitness News. Wow, where'd all the time go? Hey, I'm gonna have to turn around and break this in half. There's a whole nother section where we got more information talking about pre-listed home inspections. So look out for part two. I'm going to post it right after this, probably the next day. Hey, once again, y'all have a beautiful day. And whatever you do, look for Jesus Christ in all his destruction and disguises. Make every day Christmas. Y'all take care. God bless. Peace.